This week, Angelo sits down with Adelaide indie developer Matt Trobiani, creator of terminal-based hacking simulator Hacknet. And for your slacker fix, Johnny chats to Brian O'Halloran and Marilyn Gigliotti, better known as Dante and Veronica from Clerks. This is Player Attack. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen, and this week we have just a few big announcements to get through. Let's start with the one that rocked the most boats, shall we? Here's a look at Far Cry 5. I know that you were out there. And I know that you were in pain. But my children, I'm here to tell you that suffering is a choice. And you can choose a better path. We want you. We accept you. And we will take you. Willingly or not. And some of you may fight. But in the end, you will thank us. I am your father. And you are my children. This time around, Ubisoft has gone for something a little closer to home. Far Cry 5 is set in Montana, USA, home of The Project, a cult-like organization that will do anything it takes to make sure they are in absolute control of their surroundings. Your job is, essentially, to take away that control, and you do that by arresting the leader of the group, a man named Joseph. Things go about as smoothly as you'd expect, and the unfolding open-world experience has already been compared to something from Tarantino. Predictably, in the real world, certain groups of people are already getting a bit upset over Ubisoft's choice of villains. Apparently, white-skinned American Christian bad guys are inappropriate in the current political climate. Far Cry 5 is out February 2018. Squad, the developers of Kerbal Space Program, want to reassure the game's fanbase that nothing will really change, despite the massive bombshell news that the game has been purchased by Take-Two Interactive. The news kind of came out of nowhere. Kerbal Space Program launched officially back in April 2015 and has been ticking away gaining a cult following ever since. Now it looks like that following includes someone at Take-Two, with the publisher forking over an undisclosed amount of cash for the franchise. Rather than taking too much time off to celebrate, the development team tells fans they're still hard at work on the upcoming Making History expansion, which will provide players with even more ways to send lovable Kerbals into orbit. When Sledgehammer Games announced that Call of Duty World War II would be a historical experience, nobody was really surprised. The development team has spent time wandering around Europe, researching locations and getting a sense of what it would feel like to really be in Normandy at 10 below with snow coming down. They learned about battleground tank modifications and where the weak points are in era-appropriate tank treads. What did surprise us though was the revelation that the upcoming Nazi zombie mode also contains a storyline that is based on real events. I'm sure we'll hear more about that one later on this month at E3. Because of course E3 is coming up altogether far too quickly this year, the Electronic Entertainment Expo hits Los Angeles from June 13 to 15 and we are expecting all sorts of big announcements. Stay tuned to Player Attack for the big ones. With seven big pre-show press conferences this year, we are expecting big stuff from Microsoft, Bethesda, Ubisoft, Sony, and Nintendo. The PC gaming show should also feature some interesting bits and pieces, and while EA will not be part of E3 itself, the publisher has some big announcements scheduled for June 11, so it won't be sour on the spotlight. And one of the games we are sure will take center stage at EA's event is the new Need for Speed, with Payback announced this week. If you're expecting anything other than cars, casinos, criminals, and cops, you will be sadly disappointed. Hey, Matt. You built this all yourself? <laughs> An artist can turn any scrap into a supercar. This crew right here, that's the future. We own these streets, Tyler, and the house always wins. Now, in quick news, we are still left in the dark when it comes to Detroit Become Human, but Quantic Dream did emerge from their cave this week to reveal that Heavy Rain has now sold more than 4.5 million copies worldwide. First released back in 2010, Heavy Rain enjoyed a resurgent when it hit PS4 last year. And then while it wasn't perfect, this game was the reason I bought a PS3, so on a personal level, I'm very happy to see it's still kicking on. 
Meanwhile, speaking of that particular console, it is the end of an era as Japan officially ceases production of the 500GB standard model PS3. The console has been on sale for nearly 11 years and, it seems, has come to the end of its run. Bohemia Interactive has been quietly slugging away on tactical first-person multiplayer shooter Argo for a while now. The game features a variety of game modes, leaderboards, an impressive unlock system for weapons and gear, and the ability to create and edit your own scenarios that can play out over the massive 62 square kilometer island of Malden. And it'll be out from June 22, and it'll be free with no microtransactions. Not quite free, but the next big thing, Sonic Mania will cost just 20 bucks in the US when it launches on August 15. The dreaded Australia tax probably means it'll be closer to 50 bucks in Australia, and the collector's edition is still pretty pricey, but the standard version at least should cost less than you would expect. If you are hanging out for Middle Earth Shadow of War, the sequel to the ridiculously popular Shadow of Mordor, you will be hanging out a while longer. Warner Brothers has officially pushed the game back by just a little bit, so it will be on shelves from October 10th this year. Originally planned for an August release, Monolith Productions explains the delay is, you guessed it, because the team wants to deliver the highest quality experience and they don't want to rush things. If you're hanging out for a new smartphone or a new Nintendo Switch, you might have to choose which one is more important to you. Turns out there is an international industry-wide shortage for components that are used in smartphones, computer servers and game consoles. That is, things like NAND flash memory chips, liquid crystal displays and the tiny motors that make your controller feel like there's an ice cube clinking in a glass. For more information on any of these stories, or to keep up to date with the latest gaming news, head to playerattack.com. But for now, stick around, we've got plenty more still to come.